This episode, we're taking a look at the basics on the Autobot's Eyes in the Skies, the Outer Space Observer, Cosmos. The original Cosmos toy was first released in 1985. He was one of the line's small-scale Autobot mini-vehicles, and was notable for his unusual alternate mode, transforming into a flying saucer. Cosmos and his fellow 1985 mini-vehicles were some of the very first brand new Transformers toys that hadn't previously been available as part of a Japanese toy line. It's generally thought that they were designed for Takara's micro-change line, but wound up going unproduced until Transformers. A profile for Cosmos was written by Marvel Comics writer Bob Budiansky, which characterized him as a weak, slow robot not well suited to operating on the ground, who instead spent most of his time in orbit around Earth, monitoring the planet and acting as a communications satellite for his teammates. It was a boring, lonely life, but Cosmos would occasionally relieve the tedium by coming down to playfully scare humans with his saucer form. Now, writing this profile was about the most significant thing Budiansky ever did with Cosmos. The character didn't get much to do in the stories he wrote for the Marvel comic book, in which Cosmos was a member of an underground resistance cell on Cybertron, who came to Earth over the Decepticon space bridge. The Transformers cartoon, on the other hand, would give Cosmos a bigger role, introducing him partway through its second season in an episode that saw him tow the Autobots back to Earth after they were stranded in space. Now, like most of the new characters who joined the show at this time, no explanation was ever given for where Cosmos had come from, but his spacefaring alt mode helped to broaden the scope of the cartoon's stories, as he could enlarge himself in saucer mode to carry passengers to other planets. Most often, though, Cosmos's outer space adventures involved him getting into trouble and needing to be rescued. Whether he was being held prisoner by the Decepticons on Earth's moon and forced to power their new communication scrambling device, crashing on Saturn's moon Titan and having his unconscious body worshipped as a god by primitive aliens, or accidentally carrying an infestation of robotic alien plants back to Earth. Cosmos's voice was provided by actor Michael McConaughey and was an impression of classic Hollywood performer Peter Lorre. No sign of Decepticon activity here, Prime. Just a little fender bender on the west side. The continued availability of Cosmos's toy in 1986 earned him a couple of brief appearances in the show's third season, but after the figure was discontinued in 1987, he was quietly phased out of both the cartoon and the comic. Cosmos wouldn't be heard from again until the 21st century, but it was a long road back to prominence for him, with many bumps along the way. Artist Don Figueroa designed a new Cosmos toy for 2006's Transformers Classics line, but Hasbro wound up rejecting the idea because they thought his alternate mode was too boring. The design was revived for 2007's Titanium series, and this time made it as far as the prototype stage before it and the entire line were cancelled. It wasn't until Transformers Universe in 2009 that Cosmos finally got a new figure, a streamlined update of his classic saucer form. It was a similar struggle to feature Cosmos in cartoons, a new version of the character, an astronomer who transformed into a mobile observatory, was designed for Transformers Animated, but he only appeared in a few crowd scene cameos in the show's third season in 2009. The crew wanted to do an episode in which Cosmos came to Earth to deliver a message to Optimus Prime, during which he would have acquired his classic flying saucer mode by scanning a prop on the set of a cheesy sci-fi B-movie only to then lose his memory and think he was a real alien invader. But the show's cancellation meant the idea never made it to the screen. Hasbro's Rick Alvarez has said he wanted to revisit this idea for the third season of Transformers Prime in 2013, 
in which Cosmos would have been depicted as an inhabitant of the Cybertronian colony planet Gobatron, who came to Earth as a herald for the space pirates, the Star Seekers. But the possibility of this happening went out the window when the Star Seekers were cut from the show. It was really only in comic books that Cosmos received any attention, though it was typically only in brief or quirky roles that saw him use his spaceflight capabilities to save the day. These included destroying the monster planet Unicron with metal-eating spores in the 2007 G.I. Joe crossover Black Horizon, intercepting and redirecting a nuclear missile mid-flight in IDW Publishing's 2010 story International Incident, and wiping out an invading armada of Martian flying saucers by using his own saucer form to hide among them in a 2013 crossover with Mars Attacks. IDW did have plans to give Cosmos a solo starring role in his own self-titled Spotlight special in 2009, but like so much else involving the character, it was cancelled. It was in 2014 that Cosmos finally, truly returned to the fore, with the release of another new toy in the Transformers Generations line. Part of the thrilling 30 series that celebrated the brand's 30th anniversary, the figure came packaged with the Autobot space shuttle Payload, who converted into a blaster for Cosmos to wield. The same year, Cosmos was elevated to become a main cast member in IDW's Robots in Disguise comic book. This series emphasized Cosmos's growing frustration over the boredom and isolation of his job as he increasingly felt like he was being ignored and taken for granted. His dissatisfaction led to him forming a surprising friendship with the peaceful Decepticon Soundwave, who invited Cosmos to come and live on his new outer space commune, Sanctuary Station. After some initial hesitation, Cosmos accepted, and though he would still help the Autobots when they needed him, he found a home and friends on Sanctuary, and ultimately, gave his life defending it against the forces of Unicron. After IDW rebooted their comics in 2019, Cosmos enjoyed another starring role in the 2020 Valentine's Special, which told the story of how he fell into a long-distance romance with the Combaticon Blastoff, a space shuttle who also lived a lonely existence out on the spaceways. 2020 also saw Cosmos return to TV screens in the Transformers Cyberverse cartoon. This series featured a female incarnation of Cosmos, who co-hosted the Cybertronian TV show Alien Hunt alongside the adventurous Meteor Fire, traveling to alien worlds and hunting for new life forms. On one such hunt, Cosmos disappeared, abducted by a telepathic alien parasite, and the depressed meteor fire withdrew from public life. But when the creature reappeared on Cybertron's moon, he teamed up with Bumblebee to rescue Cosmos from her alien captor. Most recently, in 2022, another new figure of Cosmos, based directly on his classic cartoon character design, was released in the Transformers Legacy toy line as part of the Velocitron Speedia 500 collection. This range of figures centered on Transformers from across the multiverse gathering for a race on the planet Velocitron. But since Cosmos's spaceship form would be a weird fit for a race between motor vehicles, he was given a checkered flag accessory and cast as the race's starter. As one of the most sought-after toys in this series, Cosmos has come a long way after so many years of false starts, cancelled plans, and minor appearances. But he's always been a bot who's never stopped reaching for the stars. And those are the basics on Cosmos. If you've enjoyed this look at Transformers history and lore, check out the channel for over 200 more videos like it. And maybe like and subscribe while you're at it. Plus, if you support the show on Patreon, you'll get early access to new episodes. 